First time they tried to kill him, throw him off the cliff, is when he said, hey, when Elijah was here, uh, God could have healed so-and-so, but he went up outside. <laughs> and, he and then he went over here to name him the leper, uh, leopard, leper. And, um, and guess what? He's still doing that today because you guys are screwed up. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're not screwed up, but we're going to take you off a cliff and throw you off, you know? And so, um, who, yeah, that's an interesting dynamic. Um, even the 12 were hesitant to go to the nation's. Clearly, uh, <laughs> Peter. It took, it took the sec- next wave. It took Greek uh, Jews, the seven, Philip and Stephen, and ultimately uh, uh, Paul, uh, to really do the work. Uh, and eventually, the, the apostles came around, but they they mo- they more left because they had to because they were a persecution. So yeah, we we never want to go. I'm always looking for the the, the new apostle to the uh, to the Gentiles. I'm looking for the apostle to the LGBTQ. Mm. Um, because because that's that's who's going to be listened to. And I'm it's sure it's happening slow. right now, right? It just is slow. I hope so. It's just, yeah, yeah, we just don't. It's just not mainstream yet. All right, let's talk about how deliverance takes place. Freedom always comes the same way in the New Testament. It comes through the cross of Christ. And uh, and what happened at the cross? His blood was shed, and uh, and the most powerful substance, the blood of Jesus, uh, was was shed and released upon the earth at that time. I like uh, uh, Mel Gibson's movie, uh, pa- Passion of the Christ, the scene when the blood hits the ground, and and that's when Satan freaks out and loses his wig or whatever. The hour Mel, Mel Gibson did that. Uh, it tells us in Revelation 12 that Satan's on the earth. He's making war against God's people, but he can't defeat us because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony mm-hmm. and their, uh, their willingness to not shrink from death. So uh, the way I understand the blood of the lamb is it's not like a phrase. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. Voila. You know, it's the application of it. And the blood shed on the cross is about forgiveness. It's about the receiving of forgiveness. Mm. It's about giving away of forgiveness. Forgiveness. The blood of the lamb is forgiveness. It's receiving and giving forgiveness. Uh, it's the greatest, most powerful currency in the world today. Uh, the blood of the lamb forgiveness. What I have found is that we overcome demons by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So the blood of the lamb, the basic theory is uh, who, if, if everybody's infested, has an infestation. How did we get that? Well, they're, they're in the air. We, tend, we get them through sin. Sin done to us or our own sin. Everybody has lots of sins done to them, lots of sins that they do. That's how they come in. That's how they stay. How do we get rid of them? Through the blood of the lamb. Uh, f- through forgiveness, the the receiving of forgiveness for our sin and the giving away of forgiveness, particularly toward those who are the vehicles of in- infestation. Demonization is familial, often familiar spirits. They're called in the scripture somewhere. Um, and and sin, sins are generational as well. So it makes sense if the two are paired, sanctification mm-hmm. and deliverance. So the sins of the father visited on the second and third generation. Um, John Mark Homer, uh, God has a name. Uh, that doesn't sound like a good thing, but that's one of the merciful things about God is that the, the generational impact of sins are limited. Mm. Uh, they can be re- uh, removed completely as uh, as um, if we become righteous. And that's a thousand generational blessing, which I think is metaphorical. But so often we have people uh, receiving forgiveness and forgiving uh, formative people in their life, parents typically. A lot of things people don't want to forgive parents because uh, we've been trained to honor our parents and and to say that oh, they said so the anything that they did wrong. Exactly, but like the alcoholic who has to acknowledge there's a problem before he can address it. The the point of of uh, addressing sins done to us is to is to release the blood of the lamb. It's to forgive. It's not to condemn. It's to yeah. forgive. Yeah, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Uh, John three seventeen, um, but. Um, so the formula is simple. We receive forgiveness. Well, it's, it's threefold. We, we lay hands on people. We see stuff, discerning of spirits. We determine who sinned against somebody, and, and we uh, ask, ask them if they're willing to forgive that person. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see the sins on the person from the demonic attachment. Are they, are they willing to receive forgiveness from that? And so there's an expression of the blood of the lamb. I choose to forgive so-and-so for such-and-such. I choose to receive forgiveness for such-and-such. I find that people, Christians, agree that forgiveness has happened, but they, but tangibly they haven't received forgiveness. There hasn't been a transaction of a removal of that sin from them. 
or the or the attendant demonic attachment. So the, the simple answer to how do we get rid of them is, is through the blood of the lamb. Mm-hmm. If, if we see the demon, we know what it's doing. They, they receive and give away forgiveness, and then they simply tell it to leave. Very undramatic. Uh, lust, leave. Uh, anger, leave. Abandonment, leave. Uh, and it does. And it leaves mm-hmm. not only because of the blood of the lamb, but because of the word of their testimony. Because if we're going to receive deliverance, we have to be connected to the one who gives deliverance. Show me, come wake me from my 